Right. That's why we need to check and stop China's military expansion. We cannot let something like Europe before the First World War happen. Well, nobody really paid attention to German military expansion seriously and see what happened. In order to keep the peace in Asia, uh, I think we have to pay more attention to the military expansion of China, especially the Navy expansion. And it is very important, United States, Japan, Korea, Australia, Singapore, uh, those democratic countries work together and uh, you know, give warning beforehand to China that well, I think it's uh, they are not they are not free to expand, uh, dominate the sea in Asia. I think it's important for people to know that in fact China has a very small military at the moment. It's only got about twenty missiles with nuclear weapons that could hit America, whereas America's got about you know, 1,500 nuclear missiles that could hit China if they wanted to. So the discrepancy is profound. Describe exactly, Kono Taro, if you will, to the audience, what China is doing in your area of the world militarily that you don't like. Well, precise. They, have, they have very clear strategy to drive American influence out of Asia so they could dominate the sea lanes of Western Pacific. And uh, we have grown this economy for the last 50 years under the peace in West Pacific with the United States. So uh, I think the alliance with the United States and the democratic countries in Asia will be more important years to come. And uh, freedom of sea lane is key for countries in Asia, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Korea. We all depend on the freedom of navigation. And I think we have to work together to keep it that way. And I think the President Obama announced that the United States is coming to Asia Pacific. I think they would uh, uh, shrink their military presence in Europe but I think the United States will keep its presence in Asia, and that is the welcome development. And uh, I think we, we need to create uh, stability in Asia, and that is the key if this region is going to expand economically in 21st century. Has China actually stated that it's going to take over the sea lanes? What, how well, do you know? that's a that's, that's clear statement. That's that's their clear strategy. They have said that they have they have denied access, and then they will uh, expand the domination into the Western Pacific, and that's what they've been trying to do in South China Sea. And we all know what's happened. And uh, I think international society need to talk to China that. They just cannot violate the peace and the stability of uh, Western Pacific. Okay, well, I obviously need to do more reading about this. And uh, where, where should people go to find out about these policies, Konotaro? Uh, is there Policy a web page or the policies of China? Oh, well, it's, yes. Uh, you can just uh, Google it. Uh, it's a stated policy. Uh-huh. Okay, well, I, I need to learn about this. I'd like to get back now to Japan and to the nuclear situation. I've been reading lately that, and but it's not well expressed in our media here in Australia and I don't think in America, but aren't there demonstrations of thousands of people in Tokyo about Fukushima, about the radiation, about the food, about the children, particularly by the Japanese women and mothers? Is that Tell us what's happening there. Well, there are many demonstrations all over Japan, but the uh, number is not a not a big. Not big. And uh, I'm I'm urging people instead of demonstration, you know, in, instead of going to demonstration, they have to visit the politicians' uh. Uh, local office. 
tell them the, what they what they think. We'll tell them what they want, because you know, walking down the street in Japan just have no effect on the policy. Pepco and the other power company、uh, knocking door of the members of parliament every day and telling their version of the story. So I think people need to be heard by the politicians. So you know, not just collecting signature, not just walking down the street、mm. demonstration. They really talk to politician face to face and tell them、uh, what they think.、Uh, because yesterday the ministry says、uh, a couple of nuclear reactor in the western part of Japan is safe to restart.、Uh, I doubt it. There's no anti-terrorist measure for that reactor.、Uh, the ministry and the industry wanted to restart the nuclear reactor that has been stopped for inspection, and they even try to amend the policy. So we have to be very careful. We have to monitor the government, and、uh, I think the politicians need to be really involved with the correct information. Yes, I think、uh, you could take a leaf out of the movement in America, the Occupy movement. I actually spoke at Wall Street, at Occupy Wall Street, and I said, "Look, what you've got to do is occupy the Congress because it's your <laughs> Congress. They're your politicians. You are their leaders, and they are your representatives. And so is the president. So, in fact, that's what they're doing right now." The Occupy、mm-hmm. movement has moved into Congress, and I think that the Japanese people could ca- take a leaf out of the Americans'、uh, mm-hmm. Occupy movement book and go and occupy the offices of the politicians. When you speak publicly, Kono Taro, do you、uh, recommend that people do that? Well, whenever I speak to the people, I urge them to、yeah. talk to the politician. I think the Japanese people have been very,、uh, what can I say, not active.、Mm-hmm. They, they been, you know, the Japanese people have thought the politician and the bureaucrats will take good care of the energy policy, and they almost delegated the power. Uh, without any conditions,、mm. now people should realize that the bureaucrats and the politicians are not very neutral, and some are corrupt. So we really have to go in in the decision-making policy, and、uh, people's voice have to be heard through the policy making. I've also read that. All the reactors have to be closed down once a year for inspection, and none、mm-hmm. of the reactors legally can be open without the consent of the surrounding community. And therefore,、right. if that happened, it means that within a year or two, all the reactors in Japan will be closed.、Um, can you、right. comment today, on that? Today, only five out of fifty-four nuclear reactors are running, and by sometimes、uh, mid. April,、uh, those five will be shut down, so there'll be no nuclear reactors running, and the power company and the government,、uh, the bureaucrats actually, are trying very hard to restart them. And、uh, I, I think, I think、uh, there has to be many conditions for restarting the nuclear reactor. We have to check the hardware. We have to check the software and the management of the power company, who have been hiding、uh, a lot of accident and telling all the lies.、Mm. The management has to go. Management has to be changed. So there are a lot of conditions before we can allow restarting the reactors. So how is Japan coping now with electricity supply? Its power supply, with only five of its 54 reactors operating, are you getting on okay? Well, yes, we have enough excess、uh, capacity. Even if we shut down all the nuclear reactors, I don't think there'll be any blackout or anything.、Huh. We have、uh, enough oil and natural gas、uh, gen- power generators. We have a lot of hydro, and、uh, I mean, last last summer the power usage went down fifteen percent. 
so we can ask people to maximize the efficiency. Yes. So even if 54 went down, uh, there should be no problem. Isn't that interesting? I bet the same thing could happen in America if if 104 reactors went down. It only they only supply. 20% of the electricity in America and Americans can save 28% and I think by conservation I think that the Japanese people have given a wonderful example mm-hmm. of in extremists what people and societies can do to, to make themselves safer mm. yeah so I mean we, we really have to think before restarting how many nuclear re- reactors we need to restart I don't think uh, we need all 54. You probably don't uh, need any. <laughs> well, we might be able to survive without it. Yeah. So we, we are we are asking ministry and the power companies, uh, we, we, you know, give us correct numbers, and they are very hesitating. One, one last question, Kanotaro. Mm-hmm. I read yesterday that the Japanese government is setting up, setting up an independent commission to study the results of Fukushima. Would you like to comment on that briefly? Yes. Um, we have actually many uh, commissions studying the Fukushima situation. The government has one uh, commission, and the parliament, for the first time in the history, set up an independent commission studying Fukushima. And non-government side, there's a <coughs> sort of a non-government uh, studying commission. So all, we all waiting for them to report what really happened in Fukushima, what should be done for the nuclear policy. So it, it will it will coming in, in and uh, we we just uh, uh, waiting for. Do you trust the independence uh, of those commissions, or do you think they'll be biased? Well. The parliamentary thing is uh, free of government influence. Uh-huh. And uh, government commission, well, so far, so far, so good. And there's a one non-government one, and they are doing a good job. So, you know, the three commission can compete with each other for fairness and independence. So I think it's a good thing. Not just one, but uh, three years three. making studies. As long as they're independent yeah, from TEPCO as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Kono Taro, I thank you very much for a very fascinating and elucidating discussion about the current situation in Japan. And I know that many thousands of people are going to be absolutely fascinated by this discussion. If they want to reach you, do you have a web page or somewhere yes, where I they have can... a English. I have an English web page. You can just uh, uh, look it up on the website, and uh, you can Google it. What is your website? Uh, it's uh, taro, T-A-R-O dot O-R-G, uh, www.taro dot O-R-G. Okay. And there's a www dot konotaro, K-O-N-O-T-A-R-O dot O-R-G, which is English. Thank you so much for this very fascinating interview, Kono Thank Taro. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. My guest today on If You Love This Planet was Kono Taro, a Japanese politician and fifth-term member of the House of Representatives in Tokyo. I thank you very much for listening. I'm sure you're going to be fascinated with this interview. Please feel free to visit Kono Taro's web pages. Um, and we'll be back again with you next week with another Fairly interesting interview, I would think. Bye for now.